come from town to town with a horse trailer dragging behind. Just a cowboy lost in a modern world, I feel like I'm losing my mind. Not a day goes by, I don't think about how my life used to be. Now I'm out of my prime and I'm losing time and nobody's calling for me. Call my name, come round up time Now the four-wheeler takes my place And the cowboy life that I've always loved Is getting lost without a trace But I won't give up and I won't give in I'm a cowboy till I die And I know there's got to be a place for me Underneath big western sky Headed out west, gonna do my best to leave the civilized world behind. Just me, my saddle, and an honest horse will try to go back in time. Where surely there'd be a warm campfire or a bunkhouse calling my name. But tonight I'll sleep in my pickup truck, cause I'm still not playing their game. The world may turn, but the thing they can't change is the way I feel inside. A prairie fire may burn itself out, but you can't snuff a cowboy's pride. I'll be what I am, and I'll do what I do. This life is worth fighting for. Yeah, the cowboy life is a life for me, for me and 10,000 more. The cowboy life is a life for Welcome back to True Horse Horsemanship. This second part of the side pass. Uh, of course, this time I'm going to show Charlie because he's a little bit more advanced. But also, I'll still go and over what we did last time with Ringo. And even with Ringo, right there, the last part of Reed's uh, video, he actually started doing almost a true side pass. It wasn't pretty, but he was moving off my leg. Now today, what I'm going to get into also, if you don't feel comfortable using spurs, I'm going to, I'll be backing up with my leg with the whip. It's just like, like I said, if you all ain't comfortable using spurs, you can use your dressage whip. But when you're using it, the key thing is, you don't want to beat the heck out of them, hit them hard with it, but you don't want to just give love taps either. If you're, because... If you're not getting a response, that means you got to tap a little harder. So, like I said, Charlie's coming along really good, and you know it goes on about him being a horse being trainable. And uh, and everything. And like I say, going back to looking for a stud, you know, one of the key things I look for, like I said last week, is their mind and how trainable they are. I mean, like Charlie, he just stood here like a gentleman, and that's what I expect out of him. So just like I said last week, even with Charlie, I'm going to go through my checklist. Let's see how well he gives my gives his face, him backing up, 
and I'll do a little bit of lateral. Now, even though I'm in a shank bit here, it's called an independent bit, independent action. So, so that way if I pick up one side, It will. The other. It won't. Inter, the other side won't interfere with it. So going back to what we did last week, I talked about being able to move the parts of the body. Now here, so I'm going to use my dressage whip and. Uh, I'm going to keep my leg in just right here and I'm going to bend and put pressure on it. I want him to just move that shoulder. So if he don't move, I'm going to just tap. 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 But if he moves off that leg, I don't tap. Then we're going to see if I can move the other shoulder. Oh. Now, if he didn't move off that leg, move that shoulder, I'd brought my uh, dressage whip and say, hey, in other words, this whip's just backing up my leg in my heel position. When I just want to move that shoulder, I just turn my ankle into him. But I, I can do all these movements with moving my feet heel just four or five inches apart that's why on video it's hard to catch so if I want to move his hip we're going to just move his hip I'm going to move it to the left so I'll put my dressage whip in my left hand I'm going to pick up look I'm going to put my heel just probably about in front of where my back earth is and if he don't move I'm going to tap I'm going to put my heel Does it matter where you tap? Oh, uh, well the You should try to tap right there about where your leg's at So I'm, I'm going to get here where the camera pick up So I'm going to look at that hip If he don't move the hip, I'm going to bring my whip in. But I give him a chance first. He said, I'm past this basic crap. Now right there, he moved it. I just bent him. And he's, he's past this. That's what happens when a horse starts getting more and more finished. Some of this stuff, he's like, wait a minute, what the heck are you doing? So, like I said, this is always just backup. So, rehash from last week, we always start with our half pass to get that side pass. So I'm just going to walk him around a little bit. Now I've been riding him more one-handed, but I'll go to two hands like... So I'm going to ask for a trot. And we're going to just... half pass over that's for trot grab his face and we half pass over that's for trot now oh, if I'm going to the right 
my left rein is when I'm riding to anyway I can do it one handed but my left rein is my brake line and my nose position I just want to pick up that nose where if I look straight down I can see the side of his nose at this stage but if you can't do a simple path pass there's no use to trying to go to a, a side pass so we just look now right there you could, probably didn't catch it but I had my dressage whip here and I just brought it in to say hey get over there I mean to me it's it's to me it's simple I know a lot of people say use the rail use the rail but what happens hope when you use the rail you uh try to do it away from the rail the horse acts stupid I mean not act stupid but acts like it doesn't know what you're asking of it because just and what happens is the horse and you that rail becomes a crutch so take you and the horse away from the rail and you don't even know what to do but just do these simple half passes real easy and like I said, dressage whip, that's just to back up my leg. I can't say that enough. Like right there, if he doesn't move that shoulder, I'll take that and just tap him. Now the other side, <laughs> he knows, I mean, this crap, it don't trans, stuff don't transfer one side of the brain to the other. That's, I don't know who started that, but it's a bunch of crock. Because if you notice, if I, once I did it, let him know about this dressage whip. On the right side, the left side, he said, okay, I'm going to do it. And, you know, to, to get them pretty side passes, like I show all the time, you know, you should have con control of your horse's body. All of it. Like right there, I just did a little serpentine. You know, he never knows where I'm going to go. So why, even when I'm doing my exercises, warming him up, you know, I ask for a half pass. As for half, half pass, I'll break it up. So once we get the half passes down pretty good, then I'll start worrying about the side pass. And like I said, now what I do versus a lot of other people, they'll just say, move that hip more, move that hip more. If that, I'm gonna let him do it wrong here. Well, like right there, his front end is a little bit more. So somebody else will say, well, just move that hip more. Get back there and bend him more and move that hip more. Well, there's a real easy solution to fix that. Once you got your horse working off the leg, So I want to utilize my whip here. Nice Spanish walk. So to straighten him out, he was already going pretty straight. But I'll just take my left leg here. And just bring it in. Just enough to straighten him out.
So like right there, he's not going straight. Like that. But if you, I don't know if the camera picked that up, but to keep him straight, I'm going to bring my opposite leg in just a little bit just to keep that shoulder. So I'm going to ask him to go, and I'll bring that. I'm just, like I said, barely bringing my other leg in to keep them straight. That's a simple way to do it. And me and Ray, we have a little discussion about that. He says, well, there will all be short stride on the front end or whatever. Well, if the horse, if I'm not going straight, there we go, going straight, Right now, that, that hind end, when he's crooked like this, if you think about a horse's movement, well, here, I'll do it this way. This is his hiney. If, if his hiney's dragging, that means his hind end's already short striding anyway because it's not keeping up with it. So by just, I use my finger as my leg, we're going this way. I just take this and move that body straight, that shoulder straight, and now he's equal distance. He's not going to be short strided. He's going to end up being short strided when you let one end back get behind the other. So I mean a dressage whip is it's like any tool. I don't want to exaggerate here. Like right there you don't want to move. I'm going to tap him. Tap, tap, tap. Now I'm exaggerating my body while I'm doing it. I'm, like I said, right now I'm exaggerating for demonstration purposes. I'm going to look where I want to go and I'm actually going to lift. You saw me do this. What I'm doing is getting all the weight off this side of the horse and open this door so he can go that way. Like I said, I was exaggerating there. So we're going to go the other way. Straighten him up on my leg. Who? Cool. So if, if the can open, whether it's the rear end or the front, you slow down what's going too fast rather than speed up the team. Pardon? Candy wampus or whatever word you want to use, you're not straight. You slow down what's going too fast rather than speed up what's going too slow. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people, for some odd reason, the side pass and the half pass is hard for them to do. I, you know, if you got control of the horse's body, it's no biggie. But like I said, with a dressage whip, even with me wearing spurs, if I really want to finish it off like the way I'm getting with Charlie, I'm liable to carry this because to me, it's not fair to Charlie if I have to sit here and hook him real hard with a spur or if I got to really roll that hard. I mean, if I can get just a tap done with my whip, I'd rather do that. But like you said, when he's going, I'm not gonna, if he's moving off my leg, I'm not gonna tap him. So I'm gonna let him walk around a little bit. You know, in a training session, I do a lot of walking. 
and then all of a sudden I'll go the other direction. I'll be walking and go the other direction. Me, I'll break it down. I'll start. Going back and forth. So when I start cutting that down, at some point, I can start breaking it down, oh, and I'll start being able to do a pee off by putting all that together. Of course, that's a little bit upper level, but he's, he can do it. And if I really worked on it, but uh, he shows me signs that I can teach him how to pee off real quick. But the problem is. If I teach it too soon, he's going to get it be a hot horse. And with he's an Andalusian, I want to keep him quiet, just like he is. If I want it there, uh, you know, if I want to ask for it, I want to get it. But if I could just relax, put my hand down, I expect him to relax, put my hand down. Ooh. You know, that's the whole thing, like I said last time, when you're working with something, just don't get stuck on the half pass. Do something else. And you still work on controlling his body, but just don't worry about the half pass or side pass. Because, like I said, if you get where you can control his hip and his front end and his the shoulder and everything the rest of it's easy you just gotta learn you know like I said me I can now if you notice I'm riding one-handed but my off my off rain my opposite rain the rain I'm going like if I'm going this way, my left rein, I got it just a tad bit tighter. Or now, right, he's I haven't I don't like doing it, but I haven't really got out here and wore him down before I do these movements. But let's say at the end of a training session where we've worked real hard all it takes for me I could on a, on a loose rein neck bring him into a side pass but I don't you know, the stuff of lunging and lunging a horse every time you get on them. I'm not big into that, especially after a point. You know, I got a couple that I'm working twice a week. Since I'm the only one used working them, I might take move them back and forth. And they've never been on a trail. What I do is take them out on the trail in, on, in hand.
good boy. There we go. That was soft. So, you know, going in now. If you notice, uh, hope Cindy backed me up on this so I'm not imagining it. But so I backed off on the side passage for a while. And if I get serious about them, but right now I got to show y'all how not to do a perfect every time and how to fix it. But right there, you notice, let's go the other way. There we go. You know, here I'm just doing circle work and moving his shoulder and everything around. And his, his side passes and all are getting softer and, and easier. And you think, well, you're not working on it. Yes, I am, like I said earlier. If I'm working on controlling his shoulders or whatever, I'm still working on it. So, so the key thing once you get out of this, like I said, you know, don't be afraid to use your size whip to back it up, even if you are using spurs. I mean, I'd rather see that than hooking them real hard or having to really roll hard. You know, my spurs are just my power steering, what I tell everybody. And also, don't when you're moving this horse sideways don't get caught up that you're moving a whole horse sideways your this horse to me he's got there's two horses here the one in front of my growing belly and the one that's behind me my growing butt I mean I got two separate horses so I ride them accordingly so like I said Earlier, and I'm going to keep saying it. Right there, his front's a little. I just used my other leg to straighten him out. You know, it's, so to me, like I said, it's pretty well cut and dry. I hope y'all get something out here because poor Cindy, at least I'm moving around. She's sitting in the sun filming. And uh, and to me, the side, especially the half, to me, the half pass is more important than the side pass, especially for somebody like me who wants to do upper movements. If I get Charlie, especially at a trot, and he'll do it when I'm pushing him. You know, some nice half passes both ways. I'll go, what, like three or four strides, and then I'll go the other direction. Three or four strides, then I'll go the other direction. But my point is, I'd show it, but I don't want... I know human nature. Y'all going to get caught up on, oh, doesn't that look fancy? Ain't going to forget every damn thing I said. And, uh... So what, how that leads into, if I want to do a lead change, he'll just go right into the lead change and me never working on it. That right, Charlie. Hey. Oh. That's our first semi-Spanish walk moving in the saddle. He'll do it real pretty on the ground me cueing him but and he'll walk but I've had a hard time getting really Spanish walk and you know he'll do the movement but he won't get off you know his feet moving forward because actually as you know you think about it that's not natural for a horse to do he's got to have you know one foot way up in the air and moving and to in their little minds we're the stupid ones on that because in our minds we think, well, why can't you do that? Well, it's like I got my foot front foot way in the air, so why should I? How can I, you know, move? 
so anyway that's just me rambling on so like I started to say earlier hope y'all got something out of it and uh, it's nice and toast out here so as I always say be true to a horse and they'll be true to you to my kids grandkids and a special person over there watch Lake Caden hey God bless take care and have a good one